Well, welcome to the congregation of Yahweh in Panama City, Florida. We gather together on Yahweh's day to worship Him in His spirit and truth. Let Him pour out His spirit upon the people and send a blessing to them. We're living in a world of chaos. Daily the news pours out all kinds of things and has people worried. People fret and worry about what might happen, what will happen, what can happen, what can't happen. And that's a lot of the conversations today. But what we need to do is look at Yahweh's plan and seek wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. When we study the scripture and we read it and understand it, we gain wisdom. We take on his understanding and what he would have his people do. And so it's important that we read his scripture and have a conversation with him. Yahweh speaks to his people through the scripture. And when we understand that, then we learn how to read the scripture. It's not an archaic book or history that's obsolete or some uh, strange thing. It's a conversation between the one who reads and the one who speaks. And Yahweh speaks his wisdom. In Proverbs, chapter 4 and verse 1, Children, listen to the discipline of a father. And see, if the people would read this and listen as father is di uh, exercising his discipline on us, he says, and give attention to no understanding. If you want understanding, study the scripture and receive it. Let Yahweh speak to you and give you what he would have us to have. He says, for I gave you good instruction. See, this book is good instruction. Do not forsake my Torah. Now the word Torah <clears throat> is the Hebrew word which means right ruling. It's translated uh, into English as law and many people uh, have a trouble with it being law because they think law is a harsh thing. But law is not a harsh thing. It's the right way to walk. It's judgment. He says, For I was my father's son, tender, and the only one in the eyes of my mother. Now Solomon was expressing his relationship with his father, and he surely had a good relationship with his father. He definitely had a relationship with Yahweh as he became older. He says, Then he taught me and said to me, let your heart hold fast my words. Guard my commandments and live. Now Yahweh is speaking this to the hearer. And he's expressing to us what benefit we'll have if we guard his commands. We'll have life. If you want life, keep Yahweh's commands. He will direct you and guide you. Wisdom. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget and do not turn away from the words of my mouth. See, let that be the principal thing. Seek wisdom. Read these scriptures and understand what wisdom is. Do not leave her. And let her guard you, love her, and let her watch over you. See, wisdom is what takes care of you. Wisdom 
manifest in your being and in your everyday life guards you from doing foolish things. It directs you. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom and with all you're getting get understanding. So delve into the word. Read the word. Absorb the word. Let it manifest itself into you. Let it become alive in you. And that's what he's talking about. And in this day and age with all the things that's going on we can understand the salvation that's coming and protect us from that. In Psalm chapter 25 in verse 1. To you, O Yahweh, I lift up my being. And this is a prayer. When we turn toward Yahweh and commit to Him and commit ourselves to Him, He is able to manifest Himself in our lives. O oh, my Elohim, in you I have put my trust. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies exult over me. See, if you want to have what people say is a success of life, this is the condition you want to be in. A shiny Cadillac and a, a mortgage on a five-story building or a, a ten-bedroom house is not where it is. It's in how Yahweh deals with his people. Indeed, let no one who wants, uh, who waits on you be ashamed. Let those who are treacherous without cause be ashamed. And they will. Verse 4. Show me your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. That should be our plea, our prayer. When we pray to Yahweh, when we look into the Word, we ask Yahweh to speak to us. Lead me in your truth and teach me. See, if, if people really want to know what Yahweh is, delve into this book and let it teach you. Understand what teaching is. Understand what knowledge is. Understand what partaking of wisdom is. That's what he's talking about here. For you are the Elohim of my deliverance. Recognize who he is. He is our deliverance. On you I wait all the day. We wait on him on the, all of the day. You know, some people treat life like uh, a, a school year. You have to wait till after the year, the year is over to get your diploma. And then they can't look back and see all the exercise that they went through to get it. But do it every day. Have your success daily with Yahweh. It's close. If you could just be a, a, a small child... And Yahweh is tenderly taking care of you and embracing you. And you're receiving from Him. That's the attitude that He would have us to be. Verse 6. Remember, O Yahweh, your compassion and your kindness, for they are from everlasting. Yahweh's kindness is from ever, for everlasting. And we look into the world and we see many atrocities going on we wonder why but Yahweh is everlasting and he knows what's going on and he knows how he's going, what he's going to have to do to correct and to chastise and to fix and when we understand that then we can have peace at this time and we can come closer to Yahweh and receive his <coughs> wisdom that is the main thing in Psalms 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man who, was made, uh, who has made Yahweh his trust. If you have thought it out and you say Yahweh is my trust, you'll be blessed.
That's what he's talking about. And has not turned to the proud and those turning aside to falsehood. O oh, Yahweh, my Elohim, many are the wonders which you have done and your purposes toward us. There is no one to compare with you. I declare and speak. They are too many to be numbered. We can't even comprehend the greatness of Yahweh. When you study history and see how confused it is to some people, if you uh, can understand that Yahweh has a purpose for that and he is directing that and what we think is an atrocity is just a correction point, but Yahweh knows how to do this. He is leading his people to their destiny. And in the Torah this morning, we had the uh, mention of Abraham and his seed and the genealogy and down. And when you get that comprehended in your heart and mind and know how it functions in life, Yahweh is at all, we can say he, it, we're at the end of the promises that Yahweh has blessed Abraham's family with. And if you want to know who you are, you're part of Abraham's family. And then you can look back and see the genealogy and see who you are really closer to. You might be closer than you think. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahweh. Get wisdom. Get understanding. They are too many to be numbered. Verse 6. Slaughtering and meal offering you did not desire. You have opened my ears. Burnt offering and sin offerings you do not ask for. Yahweh put that burden as an exercise for learning. We need to understand that. Verse 7. Then I said, See, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is prescribed for me. And I think that this is an expression from Yahshua because it, it appears that Yahshua wrote the, uh, the Psalms. David was the scribe that penned them on the vellum, but Yahshua is the one that spoke them. Verse 8, I have delighted to do your pleasure, O my Elohim, and your Torah in with, uh, is within my heart. You see, this Torah should be within your heart. You should delight in that Torah because that is the word of Yahweh. Many people tr treat it as an archaic set of rules that you have to go by. But it's not. It is the essence of life and we should desire to go by it. It's our relationship with our Creator. It is our wisdom to look into the book and understand it. In a footnote, Hebrews 10 and 5, Therefore, coming into the world, he says, Slaughtering and meal offerings you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Yahweh prepared this body. In burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not delight. See, Yahweh did this to recover what was lost. And we need to come to the understanding of where Yahweh is with the relationship of his people. In Psalms 119, verse 1. Psalms 119, verse 1. Blessed are the perfect in the way who walk in the Torah of Yahweh. If you want to be perfect, walk in the way of Yahweh. You'll understand what perfection is. Abraham did. Abraham did. And Yahweh accounts it as perfection. Blessed are those who observe his witnesses. These scriptures are the witnesses of Yahweh, and we observe them. We are blessed. 
who seek him with all the heart. And this is the important part. You can't just do it as an exercise and, and forget it a little while and think about it and then run and try to catch up. You have to absorb it daily. Absorb it as your way of life. Everything that you do, every obligation you have should be based around what he's talking about here. Yea, they shall do no unrighteousness. They shall walk in his ways. Now see, people say, well, you don't have to keep the commandments anymore. He died on the uh, cross and all you got to do is let's get ready and go to church. That's not what he said. He did not do away with his Torah. He manifested his Torah. And these laws are not the uh, burden that people think they are. They are the way of life that guides us in the right direction. Verse 4, you have commanded us to guard your orders diligently. See, Yahweh asks us with a command. Just like an instruction for a soldier. He gets a command from his officer. He goes and does what is supposed to be done. We should treat this Torah just like that. If Yahweh commands us, we should get it done. The main thing is believe that he is in charge. Oh, that my ways were established to guard your laws. See, when you get the mindset and the establishment between you and Yahweh to guard his laws, you don't find it tr any trouble to keep his commandments. He says, Then I would not be ashamed when I look into your commands. See, if you can look in the commands with a perfect heart, you don't have to be condemned. You read these. You delight in them. This is our wisdom. Think about it. Verse 7, I thank you with uprightness of heart when I learn the right rulings of your righteousness. Thank Yahweh for his righteousness. Thank Yahweh for his right rulings. He said, I guard your laws. Oh, do not leave me entirely. How would a young man cleanse his path to guard it according to your word? See, if we start out at a young age studying the Word, following the Word, imbibing the Word, we don't drift away from the Word and we have a better relationship with our Father. It's not good to take the chance of doing everything you want to do in defiance and then at the last day get a deathbed repentance. It's just not that good. It's better if you have a, a relationship with the Father. It's wisdom. That is the wisdom that the world is lacking. They have not followed the Word. Some people drift off into ethereal religions and worship the host of heaven and are contrary to Yahweh, but they think they're doing Yahweh a service to be in the religion. But we need to get on a personal relationship with him. I have sought you with all my heart. Let me not stray from your commands. That is a good prayer. I have treasured up your word in my heart. When this book is like a treasure to you. And you have a desire to keep it, read it, study it, devour it. It does not become a book that draws dust in the house, in the library. It is alive and in you. I have more understanding than all my teachers. For your witnesses are my study. See, teachers are supposed to be a guide. They're not supposed to have the job of pouring all the information into your head and then you go educated and you go on about your way. 
the teachers are supposed to instruct you and question you and stir up your thinking processes and you're the one that is supposed to absorb that and then you become as educated as the teacher. And that's the purpose in having an education is to become educated. But it's more than just learning lots of information. It is what you absorb in your being that becomes your personality and becomes you and your relationship with the law giver. He says, I understand more than the aged, for I have observed your orders. See, a young man can be uh, more understanding than an old man if he observes the orders from Yahweh. Verse 101, I have restrained my feet from every evil way. See, you have to take it on your own responsibility to stop long enough and think out what is an evil way and you abstain from the evil way. You can't just drift through life, bumping along, taking whatever comes along, and then trying to pacify yourself through life. It will come to confusion. He said, I restrain my feet from every evil way that I might guard your word. See, guard the word. Treat it as important. It's the very life that you have to breathe life in your body is this word. Verse 105. And this is a key verse. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That scripture you should memorize and keep in your mind all the days of your life and think about it every once in a while and just say this word, this book, this memory that I have of the word that I've read is a lamp and it becomes a light to my feet as I walk, as I go about his way. I have sworn and I confirm to guard your righteousness, a righteous ruling. I have been afflicted very much. O oh, Yahweh, revive me according to your word. See, when we have some afflictions, it's to get our attention. And when we uh, ask Yahweh, or come to Yahweh, then he guides us on the right direction. Verse eight, uh, 108, please accept the voluntary offering of my mouth. O Yahweh, and teach me your right ruling. And see, that should be the attitude of all of us. We should uh, memorize this scripture, this verse in particular, and let our uh, acceptable offering be the word of our mouth to Yahweh. And let him teach us his right ruling. My life is in my hand continually, and your Torah I have not forgotten. See, this is the way you guide your life when you plan whatever you have to do or afford to do or want to do or anything that has to do with your daily living. Uh, you plan it to be in the way of Yahweh. In Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1, listen to me. You who pursue righteousness, seeking Yahweh, look to the rock you were hewn from and to the hole of the pit you were dug from. And we are dust of the earth. It's been proven, even scientifically, that dust we are and to dust we shall return. And this moment that we spend on earth called life is by the glory and the mercy of Yahweh. 
And so we need to understand that. Look to Abraham your father. And that is good for you to do that. Everyone should understand that Abraham is your grandfather. And the genealogy down to the present day. Sarah who bore you. Your grandmother. For he was alone when I called him. And I blessed him and increased him. In uh, verse 3. For Yahweh shall comfort Zion. Yahweh can look on the atrocities of the world. And he can bring comfort to those. He shall comfort all her waste places. For he makes her wilderness like Eden. And her... Uh, desert like the garden of Yahweh joy and gladness are found in it thanksgiving and the voice of song see this is the attitude that we need to have the wisdom of Yahweh verse 4 listen to me my people you want to know who you are Yahweh is speaking if you accept that, you listen for what he has to say. And give ear to me, O oh my nation, for the Torah goes forth from me. This Torah is not some archaic writing. This is the Torah of Yahweh. This is the right ruling. This is the righteousness of Yahweh going forth. And we are absorbing it and we live by it. If we're in the right place with Yahweh. And my right ruling I set as a light to peoples. The people who are in darkness needs to look for the light. Because the light is there for them. Everyone. No matter what relationship they have in the world. They should start looking back toward Yahweh. Verse 5. My righteousness is near. Righteousness is important. It's the right way to go. It's what righteousness is. It's the right way to walk. It's the right way to breathe. It's the right way to eat. It's the right way to look. It's the right way to love. It's the right way to keep your family together. That's righteousness. That's how people need to be involved in their life. My deliverance shall go forth and my arms judge peoples. Yahweh has set it out there so he could judge us. And judging is not condemnation. See, that's the idea that most people have that judgment is condemnation. The judgment of God, so to speak, in the secular world, they say he's going to judge you. Well, if you let him judge you, you will walk in his right way. You won't stick around till the condemnation comes. Now, the condemnation is final. But the judgment is right ruling. Coastlands wait upon me. And for my arm, they wait expectantly. Wait for Yahweh's arm expectantly. That he is going to give you what you need. He'll give you the desires of your heart if you look toward him. He said, lift up your eyes to the heavens and look to on earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish like smoke and the earth shall wear out like a garment and those who dwell in it die as gnats. But my deliverance is forever. My righteousness is not broken. See, it's not just living them like you want to and come to the end and it's over. It's, that's not the way it is. We are to live in the righteousness of Yahweh. Expecting Him for deliverance. Expecting Him for uh, blessings. And He is calling to us. With His word, He is calling. Here's what He says in verse 6. Lift, uh, uh, lift up your eyes to the heavens. That means look up. And look on the earth beneath, for the heavens shall vanish and the, uh, like smoke, and the earth shall wear out like a garment, and those who dwell in it die as gnats. But my deliverance is forever. My righteousness is not broken. 
Listen to me. You who know righteousness, a people in whose heart is my Torah, do not fear the reproach of men, nor be afraid of their revelings. Now this is your comfort and your salvation in a boisterous world that we live in. Isaiah 55. Oh, everyone who thirsts, are you thirsty? Come to the waters. And you who have no silver, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without silver and without price. This word, this wisdom that we're seeking comes with just the effort of coming to Him. It comes without price. Why do you weigh out silver for what is not bread? People pay big money, and it turns out to be nothing. It's not bread. And your labor for what does not satisfy. They work themselves for nothing because it don't satisfy. Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and let your being delight itself in fatness. <clears throat> if you want to be energized, read this book and absorb it as the message that he is speaking to you. Yahweh is mindful of his people. He tells us, incline your ear and come to me. See, if you want to know something about Yahweh, incline your ear. Don't go ask some religious person to tell you what Yahweh is or how to get to it. This book will give you wisdom. You come to him. He says, hear, hear what it says, so that your being lives, and let me make an everlasting covenant with you, the trustworthy kindness of David. See, you can read about David. He was a grand warrior, made a pretty good king. Created a family. He fulfilled some things for Yahweh, but he still was a human being and he did just as evil as anybody else. But Yahweh forgave him. Yahweh cultivated him. And we need to put our trust in Yahweh. He said, see, I have given him as a witness to the people. A leader. David was a leader. And a commander for the people. And see, he was just a temporal example. The true David came a few generations later and he fulfilled it. And we're in the position, in the generation, to know and understand and have a relationship with him. And that's where we are today. We are seeking wisdom. We need wisdom for this congregation and the congregations that hear this word and the people who think that they know Yahweh go and get wisdom. See, a nation you do not know, sh you shall call. And a nation who does not know, you sh uh, run to you. Or, because of Yahweh your Elohim and the set apart one of Israel for he has adorned you. Yahweh is the set apart one of Israel and he has adorned his congregations wherever they are. Little and big, here and there, all over, everywhere. Every nation. We get letters from the Philippines on the internet because in the last year or two it's just expanded. You get letters from India, you get letters from Africa, and they're doing the same thing we're doing. They're talking to Elohim. They're thinking about Yahweh. They're coming around. He says, Seek Yahweh while he is to be found. Call on him while he is near. This is our obligation to Yahweh. We need to memorize this and, and absorb this and let this be just part of our being. 
Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Revelation chapter 3 verse 18. I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire. Yahweh is speaking to every individual with this sentence. So that you become rich and white garments. So that you become dressed. See, when we're getting this wisdom and we're reading this scripture and we're absorbing it and it's becoming part of our being, we're accomplishing just what he's talking about here. So that the shame of your nakedness might not be shown. And anoint your eyes with ointment so that you see. Ask Yahweh to anoint your eyes with the vision, the ointment that will give you the vision that you need. Let him pour out his spirit upon you. Accept him. And here's what he says. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. If you have a few heartaches, a few upsets, and a few setbacks, take it with joy. So that, so be ardent and repent. That's all it's for. If you think you've done something wrong, repent. That's all it takes. Yahweh is looking for people to search for him. As many as I love, I reprove and discipline. So be ardent and repent. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I shall come in to him and dine with him and he with me. So if you hear Yahweh knocking on your heart, on the door of your heart, open, let him come in and he will dine with you and you with him. Verse 44, Matthew 13, 44. Again, the rain of the heavens is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man having found it hid and for joy over the, it, it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. And this is how people should think about their education and have it directed toward Yahweh. Buy the field. And then you'll reap what comes from it. Again, the rain of the heavens is like a man, a merchant, seeking, a fine, per seeking fine pearls. Who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Sell out everything you got and buy this pearl. That's what he's talking about. This is the life that you're talking about out of this book. Sell all you've got and buy it. Then shall those who fear Yahweh speak to one another. This is in Malachi. Excuse me. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16. Then shall those who fear Yahweh speak to one another. And Yahweh listen and hear and a book of remembrance be written before him and those who fear Yahweh and those who think upon his name. See, that's how you have that relationship with him. Think on his name. And here's what he says, and they shall be mine, says Yahweh of hosts. On the day that I prepared a treasure possession, and I shall spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. See, Yahweh is treating us just like his own sons. Then you shall again see the difference between the righteous and the wrong, between the one who serves Elohim and the one who does not serve him. See, it's better to serve Elohim at this time. Malachi 4 and 1. For look, the day shall come, burning like a furnace, and all the proud and every wrongdoer shall be stubble. And the day that shall come shall burn them up, says Yahweh of hosts, which... 
I have been, uh, let's see, which leads uh, to them neither root nor branch. But to you who fear my name, the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go out and leap for joy like calves from the stall. Now that is the relationship that you want to have. When you gain wisdom, you will know what Yahweh is talking about. And you shall trample the wrongdoers, for they shall be <clears throat> ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says Yahweh of hosts. And see, he keeps reminding us ever so often. Verse 4. Remember the Torah of Moshe. Now, don't think that he did away with the Torah of Moshe because of some religious tenet. Yahweh is everlasting. He says, My servant, who I commanded him in Ro, uh, uh, Horeb for all Israel, laws and right rulings. That's what these verses on these pages are, laws and right rulings. It is Torah. And that's precious. And it is for us. It is our treasure when we understand it. See, I am sending you Eliah, the prophet, before coming of the great and awesome day of Yahweh. And he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with utter destruction. See, it's time that we turn to each other, is what he's saying. To our fathers, and our fathers turn to us. And he shall go before him in the spirit of and power of Eliyahu, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the disobedient to the insight of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh. Luke chapter 1 and verse 17. I'll just read that again. Listen to it. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Eliyahu to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient uh, in, uh, to the insight of the righteous and to make ready a people prepared for Yahweh. And that's what the exercise he is doing with this word that we are uh, involving our lives in. He is preparing us as a people for himself. And Zechariah said to the messenger, By what shall I know this? For I am old and my wife is advanced in years. And the messenger answered him and said, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of Elohim and was sent to speak to you and announce to you this good news. And that's, this is the, uh, in the book of Luke there, verse 1 or chapter 1, where he is approaching Eliah to uh, give uh, the instruction that John the Baptist is going to be born, who is the forerunner to introduce Yahshua and baptize him. And this is what he uh, made known to the people. In verse 19, And the messenger answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of Elohim, and was sent to speak to you and announce to you this good news. But see, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day this takes place, because you did not re uh, believe my words, which shall be filled in their appointed time. And see, he was the high priest that year. And he was so wrapped up in his ritual so he couldn't really believe it. So Yahweh just let him be dumb till it happened. But he told him that it was going to happen. 
And the people waited for Zechariah and marveled at his delay in the dwelling place. And when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they recognized that he had seen a vision in the dwelling place, and he was beckoning to them and remained dumb. In uh, Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 1, See, a day shall come for Yahweh, and your spoil shall be divided in your midst, and I shall gather all the Gentiles to battle against Jerusalem and the city shall be taken. The houses plundered and women ravished. Half of the city shall go into exile, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. And see, we've seen that in history. Jerusalem has been utterly destroyed. Uh... Probably two or three times, but the, the main one was when Yahshua, the Romans, destroyed it. And then it was rebuilt back in 1948. And uh, it's time that uh, something could go on over there that we really don't know is what's going to happen right now. In Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 3, Yahweh shall go forth and he shall fight against those Gentiles as he fights in the day of battle. And see, Yahweh is going to be the instrument in that fight. Some people are worried about who's going to win or who's going to fight, which nation is going to do what. You let Yahweh guide the battles because he's the one that does them. He says, In that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall be split in two, from east to west, a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall move toward the north and half toward the south. And you shall flee to the valley of my mountain, for the valley of the mountains reaches to Estal. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, sovereign of Yehuda, and Yahweh, my Elohim, shall come, all the set-apart ones with you. And in that day it shall be, there is no light, it is dark. And it shall be one day which is known to Yahweh, neither day nor night, but the evening time there shall be light. And in that day it shall be that living waters flow from Jerusalem. And see, when he makes that correction, we could be still on earth. It could be pretty quick. He could delay it a few more years. We don't know. There's no one can tell you the day the, nor the hour. But we do know that there is enough in the past that it could happen at any time. He said, half of them toward the eastern sea and half toward the western sea in summer as well as in winter. In Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 9, And Yahweh shall be sovereign over the earth. And that's what people need to understand, that Yahweh is going to be sovereign. He's not going to be an ethereal uh, deity out there somewhere that's going to wait and everything's going to be all right. Yahweh is involved. And we need to understand that. In that day there shall be one Elohim, uh, Yahweh and his name one. In uh, ver verse 10. And the land shall be changed into a desert plain from Gibeah to Rimon south of Jerusalem, and she shall be raised up and inhabited in her place from Benjamin's gate to the place of the first gate and the corner gate and from the tower of Haniel to the winepress to the sovereign and they shall dwell in her and there shall be no one uh, no more utter destruction but Jerusalem shall uh, be safely inhabited and there is coming a time that he is going to accomplish this and rebuild Jerusalem uh, verse 12 and this is the plague with which Yahweh plagues all the people who fought against Jerusalem. see everybody that fights against Yahweh 
physically in Jerusalem or spiritually wherever in the world, if they fight against Yahweh, this is the plague. Their flesh shall decay while they stand on their feet, and their eyes decay in their sockets, and their tongues decay in their mouths. And it shall be in that day that a great confusion from Yahweh is among them, and every one of them shall uh, seize the hand, leave uh, hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against his neighbor's hand. And Yehuda shall fight at Jerusalem as well. And the wealth of all the Gentiles around about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and garments in great quantities. So also is the plague on the horse and the mule and on the camel and the donkey and on all the cattle that are in those camps as this plague. It shall be that all who are left from all the Gentiles which come against Jerusalem shall go up from year to year and bow themselves to the sovereign Yahweh of hosts and to observe the festival of booze. And see, people worry about these little congregations keeping these festivals. All we're doing is it's just a, a visual aid of what Yahweh is doing and we're learning from keeping them. Practicing. We are practicing, but in that time, all the nations, even the ones that rebelled, are going to come up and be forced to do it. He says, and it shall be that if anyone who of uh, the clans or the earth does not come up to Jerusalem and bow himself to so the sovereign, Yahweh of hosts, on them there will be no rain. Now that will get their attention. They'll be ready to come. And if the clan of Mitzrayim, and that's next door, does not come up to enter in, then there is no rain. On them is the plague with which Yahweh plagues the Gentiles who do not come up to observe the festival of booths. See, it would behoove these people today to start looking into this information and letting it speak to them. Why do we keep the festival, a festival of booths? Because it is the pattern of Yahweh's salvation. It shows us why Yahshua had to come and die, the day that he died on, the day he resurrected on, and uh, the day that the congregations received their blessing. All of these feasts, and then in the fall of the year, it's, uh, it, it explains the, the prosperity of, of the people. And it behooves us to keep the festivals. He said, this is the punishment of Mitzrayim and the punishment of all the Gentiles that do not come up to observe the festival of Booths. See, it's just that simple. That's wisdom when you understand that. In verse 20, continuing, in that day, set apart to Yahweh, that day is set apart by Yahweh, to Yahweh. Shall be uh, engraved on the bells of the horses. See, there's going to be signs and symbols to put forth that the people can see and understand. And the pots in the house of Yahweh shall be like the bowls uh, before the altar. And every pot in Jerusalem and Yehuda shall be set apart to Yahweh of hosts. Everything will be set apart. And in those who slaughter shall come to take them and cook with them. And there shall be no longer a merchant in the house of Yahweh of hosts in that day. There will be no merchandising in Yahweh's house. Oh, that's right. And people don't really understand about merchandising in Yahweh's house. But if you look at the religious world today, that the merchandising that's going on, uh, Yahweh is going to correct that. And so as we search the scriptures and let Yahweh speak to us and we receive wisdom, which is the result of studying and understanding, Yahweh will accomplish his uh, word in your life and let you become what he would have you be. May Yahweh bless and keep you. Amen.